Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolotech, and today we're going to start a quick series on user tips for those who have iPhones or are waiting for their upcoming Verizon iPhone. So I figured we'd start this off by talking about battery life and giving some tips on saving that. So let's go ahead and turn this on, and what we will find here is our home screen. And the first thing we're going to talk about is minimizing the use of location services. Now location services take a lot of battery power because they're using a GPS antenna to calculate your position. So we'll go under settings. So those of you that didn't see that, here's your settings icon. It may be in a different place. We tap that and it opens. And we go under general for our location services. Location services is right, is right here, and currently it's on. It can be set individually for each app that uses location services, such as Facebook. Uh, you can see GPS Drive is a GPS application. We've got some camera data for when it, if it wants to geotag you. You can shut this off individually or off as a whole. We just tap, and it will ask you if you want to turn it off. I don't in this case, and it will stay on. The next thing that you may want to check for saving battery life is push notifications. Push notifications are notifications from applications that can actually uh, send you a notification when there's an update. So if we go here at the top, you'll see notifications and they're on. We can tap on this and again, we can control them individually. We can shut them off altogether or we can control them in each app. So in this case, I use notifications on Twitter. So when someone direct messages me on Twitter, it actually sends a, a pop-up to the screen and tells me the message. And then if I want, I can go into the application and grab that message and read it. I can shut these things off individually, sounds, alerts, and badges, or all of them at once. So that will save you some battery life for sure. I have them off on these different applications for that reason. It does save me battery life. The next thing you want to look at is the data options, which is basically fetching new data uh, constantly or less often, and that is done via your mail, contacts, and calendars. Mail has a lot of different options as far as what you can do with it, but the things that use the most battery have to do with push email. And for those of you that don't know what push email it is, uh, basically it takes your email <clears throat> and connects with the account kind of constantly and pings it and says, is there a new, is there a new email? And within seconds of receiving the new email, it pushes it to the phone so that you have it what seems to be instantly or almost instantly. That takes up a lot of battery over time. So to access that, we go, let me go back, fetch new data is set to push. We go into here. We can shut off push data. So I'll do that to show you. And then below this, we have options for how often we want it to look then. If we don't want it to be pushed, we want to see how often the accounts that don't support push data actually will check your email. So we have 15 minutes, 30 minutes, hourly or manually. For the best battery life you want to set it to manually so that it actually looks and sets your um, email to only be checked when you access your email. Otherwise it's just going to check at every different interval you set it to. So let me turn that back on. The next thing you want to check for is fewer email accounts. These email accounts can be set up, indiv oops, can be set up individually uh, to pull data and let's go under the mobile me account which actually has find my iPhone find my iPhone actually will use the location services to locate your iPhone using mobile me if you go to me.com and have an account you can pinpoint where your iPhone is and send a message to it and you can actually remote wipe it if you lose it so it's a pretty handy thing and um, this controls that so I have mine set to on so if I did, ever did lose it or someone stole it I'd be able to wipe it and know right where it is uh, we also have separate options for mail, contacts, calendars, bookmarks, and notes, and each one of these takes more battery and time to sync, so you're going to want to take that into account when you're using this. Let's go back here, and the next thing we want to check out is the use of third-party applications. Now let's go back to the home screen, and that means multitasking. There's a lot of applications that can run in the background, such as uh, Pandora and music applications, and the way we see that is this home button here, we tap it twice. Double tap, double click, and we can scroll, and here's all the applications that are suspended currently and taking up memory and possibly using data or running in the background. So to shut those, we tap and hold, You'll see them start to jiggle and we have minus signs. We can tap, <clears throat> excuse me, we can tap the minus sign to close each one of these applications, therefore saving us more battery and actually freeing up some memory and sometimes speeding up the phone when it starts to bog down. So you can see I just close these all out. 
and we can just go all close all of them and that's it tap again either on the bottom home button or we can tap the screen to go back to normal and as you can see I just received an email so that gives you an idea of how often it checked it says I've got an email and we'll go into those things on a different video Another thing that can use up battery is your different connections such as Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. We access those again under settings and we find Bluetooth under general. So we'll go under general and here you see Bluetooth is off. If I'm not using Bluetooth with either a headset or a car wireless adapter or whatever, um, we can shut it off. We just tap on this and we have an on off option. It's turning on, shutting off and that's it. We can also do the same thing to save battery by shutting off Wi-Fi. Now Wi-Fi strangely isn't under general, it's actually under Wi-Fi up here where there's all these networks and we just turn that off the same way and we shut off our Wi-Fi antenna. Now if you're going to be pulling a lot of data you actually want Wi-Fi on if you have it available as it seems to take a little bit less power over time than how uh, 3G connection does. So keep that in mind. There's only a couple more things for for this. If you want ultimate savings you can put it in airplane mode thus shutting off all of the the uh, wireless antennas we do that by just tapping on it or sliding it you can see the little airplane applies itself or plus itself in the upper left and all your antennas are off you won't get any use any data or anything you'll be able to use it as an iPod and use all the applications but you won't be able to have a connection let me turn that back on one of the last things is the brightness here we have a brightness setting to light your screen takes more battery. The brighter it is, the more battery it's going to take over time. I have mine set to auto brightness, so there's actually an ambient light sensor up here based on the brightness of the room will brighten or dim the screen. Now I'll turn this up and show you, and it's going to affect the white balance of the camera, so I apologize, but there's the bright. See how bright that went? I can turn it all the way down. It's very hard to see, but you could do that if you needed to. And the auto brightness does help, like I said, especially if you're in a bright area and it's sunny, you want the brightness on, it will kick the brightness up when it senses the extra sunlight. Now finally, we can do something that you wouldn't really think uses a lot of battery, but can when you're playing music, is the uh, equalizer or EQ. And that's found under iPods under settings, so we go to iPod and here is your EQ. You have different settings for your equalizer. If you turn that off you're going to use less power while uh, using your iPhone as an iPod and listening to music and uh, for whatever reason that does save quite a bit of power according to Apple. There is another thing for those of you that have a 3G or a GSM I should say iPhone like this one that's on AT&T or has a SIM card and that is your 3G connection. Uh, 3G data usage is actually takes more power than Edge which is slower and more like dial-up but it will consume less power. Um, so under network here we have enable 3G. If I turn that off I can turn off cellular data altogether here which will also save power but that will save us some power if you don't need to be accessing the internet constantly or you need to really conserve power. Finally, if you really, really are having a hard time finding this, the battery to last on your iPhone, there are plenty of external battery options that plug in right to this port here and charge your phone on the go and provide basically a whole nother battery to this. I find this phone to have fantastic battery life compared to most smartphones and really can get well through a day through with it and don't be surprised if the first day you don't get great battery life it usually takes a day or so for the battery to charge and discharge and then it really seems to improve suddenly in just about every phone I've tested so that's going to be a key to any of you that um, first get your iPhone and think maybe you have a bad battery give it a day or two you'll see a big imp uh, increase and for any of those that are getting a Verizon iPhone Congratulations, finally it's there, I know, and I um, hope this helps you out. Check back soon for the next video, and this is Aaron, I'll see you next time.